Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from Helion Comedy Club in Pennsylvania. Give it up for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe. Hello, Philadelphia. Make some fucking noise. Wow. Look at this. It's Brian Redman, ladies and gentlemen. We are live hey. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the first time ever. <laughs> How exciting is this? We are squoze in on a small stage. Everything is tight knit. Romantic. We are squozing in for Philly. It has happened. We you asked and you received. We added a second show and we added a third kill Tony on Saturday. You guys are unbelievable. Clearly, you guys were the first to get tickets, so a shout-out to you, Fox. Uh, we also have four massive stand-up shows this weekend. I believe tickets are still available if you guys aren't busy on uh, Friday or Saturday. I think only the first show, Saturday, is sold out. And I do believe uh, the Saturday Kill Tony sold out, but uh, there might be one or two tickets available. And we're here, Red Bank. Can yes. you believe it? It's great. There's a poster that's for sale after the show that was drawn by our very own Ryan J. E. Belt. Look at that. That's for sale along with, uh, and we'll sign them for you. There's only, the there's only like a hundred of them, right? Or something like that? Yeah, very limited edition. We'll sign them if you buy one. We'll be out there for a few minutes after the show. Uh, they're also going to be selling uh, Cat Burglar stickers and magnets, a Joel Berg sticker, and Jeremiah brought original CDs. Oh, of his compact stand-up discs. comedy, yes. Yeah, compact discs, For those guys. of you that are not only fans of massive internet shows, but also still have CDs players uh, <laughs> Jeremiah will be selling uh, uh, CDs of probably some of his older stand up he's been selling these for a while so not even like new topical stuff it's right. like real grassroots pure stand up I comedy. think he transferred it from VHS also so, really yeah. if you just want to give Jeremiah money after the <laughs> show uh, for anything he'd appreciate it and uh, what else oh special shout out to Alex your Kaba, who made this amazing, look at this fucking Philly custom made uh, bucket of destiny. He's on Instagram at Your Cabeza, Y U R C A B A Z A. So that's pretty cool. And a special shout out to uh, David Knowles and Seth Miller from Menchie Music. They're here. Uh, that Menchie Music is an amazing store with multiple locations all across PA. And they are the ones, the brilliant geniuses that uh, gave Jeremiah Watkins a saxophone. So how fucking cool are they? Make some noise for them. They're somewhere around here. And the entrance is on your left all night. That's right this way. If you get pulled out of the bucket, you got to go around and you got to go that way. Don't try to be fancy and jump over stuff. It's not going to happen. Uh, so that's that. These road kill Tonys are fun. Yes, they're always different. How many of you found out about this kill Tony from l hearing us promote it on the podcast Kill Tony? <laughs> That's a lot of people. So you're going to have to sit there and enjoy yourselves while we keep it going because we are in Ventura, California on Thursday, St. Louis on April 4th with four stand-up shows after that at that Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis. 411 West Nyack, New York gets their own Kill Tony with weekend stand-up at Levity Live. Uh, and then La Jolla, we just added a second Kill Tony show there. That is on April 28th, and I do stand-up there the 26th and 27th. And don't forget, you big uh, Northern California comedy fans, Kill Tony Mania returns October 18th and 19th, and in Sacramento, uh, the 16th and 17th. So that's Sacramento and then San Fran. That's going to be eight Kill Tonys in eight days. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yep. Yep. So wow. there you go. How many of you like coffee? Caveman Coffee makes the best. Use the promo code Kill Tony. Save 15% off any order of that. And we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Um, as always with all of these uh, road shows, we never bring a guest with us. Uh, however, Philadelphia, since you guys are such goddamn animals, we were, since we added shows and whatnot, we were able to rationalize bringing the best damn band in the land with us. They are... Uh, they are uh, two of the funniest human beings on the planet. Every single episode of this show, if you don't know, uh, maybe you're the girlfriend of a big fan of this show and this is your first time, you're like, what the fuck did you bring me to? 
uh, the uh, the band stays in character throughout the entire episode. It's always different characters. Sometimes they'll bring back some of our favorite characters or some of theirs. We never know what they're going to be. They uh, they had a separated area there where they were getting ready and tooting their horns and whatnot, and uh, maybe getting ready to sell some original CDs. <laughs> Compact uh, discs. But here they are. Let's see how loud this place can get for the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins and Joel Berg. Joel Jimenez. What will they be? What? Are you guys gym teachers? Is that what it is? Coaches? Gym teachers? My name is Roy Robeson, and I am the coach at Johnson County Community College. Oh, wow. Roy Robeson. And, uh, and, uh. <laughs> and uh, wow. You must be, what are you, a, uh, a uh, caramel chocolate sundae? What are, what is this monstrosity <laughs> behind me? This looks like Fortune Feimster with sunburn. Are you going to let me talk? Okay, go ahead. Here it is. <laughs> My name's Chris Johansson. I'm a coach uh, over at Beaver Tits, Florida uh, High School. So you guys are high school and community college coaches. I'm excited about this. Yeah, I gotta go pro really soon. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, wow. How old are you, Roy Robeson? Ah, uh, 43. <laughs> 43. Wow, that is some strong hair for a 43-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, hairline's on point. You can say that. <laughs> Have you? Has that always been the color of your hair? Yep, came out as a baby. Same style, same <laughs> length. <laughs> All right, well, I'm excited. This is your guys' first time being on this show, right? We've never had a... Right? Is this your first time, uh, coaches? You're darn sure it is. Wow, Philadelphia, you have a first time... Uh... <laughs> this is a first time for everything. <laughs> These guys... <laughs> well, I love it. All right, so we have uh, we have uh, the band is in place. The uh, athletic uh, coaches of community college and high school Beaverton. What you used to do? Uh, you used to be a wrestler, huh? Yeah, in high school. Yep, I played basketball and baseball too. All state. I mean, no, I'm from Ohio, where they have great athletes. So you were a bad athlete. No, I just wasn't, uh, you know, like, uh, like uh, in basketball, one of our rivals was LeBron James when I graduated. He was in my... Delay a game, go oh, ahead, okay. go back right. to the show. I mean, I dropped a pretty big name there. I was in the same class as uh, LeBron James and Maurice Claret, if you've ever heard of those guys, but I guess so, delay a game. I'm going to so, need you to pick up those names you just dropped. I mean, he asked me... <laughs> All right, I get it. Uh, so anyway, I have this uh, bucket is uh, filled to the brim with uh, names of Philadelphia people. Not really. To the bottom bottom brim, if you're wondering which brim I'm talking about. Uh, with people that signed up for the chance to get 60 seconds on this stage. If I pull your name out, you know your time's up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry, gay Philadelphia bear. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't ask what the gay part of town was. I forgot to do that. Yeah. What is the gay part Trey, of town? Trey, what's the gay part of town? Gaberhood. Gaberhood? That, that's what it's called. Yeah. Shit, I was pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> you're, oh you're, my. Wow, you have very clever neighborhood names here in yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah. I thought it would. Where else is there? Like Faggotsville or something like that? Hey. hey. Gaberhood. My God. Jesus. Homo Depot. <laughs> Fucking, uh, fucking, all right. Uh, so let's Queersville? Just jump right I said Queersville, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we have the, uh, we have the uh, coaches, we have a bucket, we have Red Band, me, you guys ready to start this fucking thing or what? I guess so, that's it, right? We're going to time them, all good. Here we go, be careful getting to the stage, people. Don't fucking hurt yourself. Don't don't knock over people's drinks and whatnot. All right, here we fucking go. Make some noise for your first comedian tonight, Louis Daraville. Louis Daraville. Where's Louis at? 
Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Come on, one more time for Louis Darabil. Yo, Helium, give me some love. Uh, first of all, there's like four black people in here. Is this Philly or Ohio? Uh, you ever notice that there's, a, there's like a lot of things that are politically correct with one glaring exception? Can somebody please tell me why Dick Sporting Goods is not called Richards yet? <laughs> I mean, like, I can't even be a soccer coach getting supplies. Hey, yo, Lou, where you going? I'm going to Dick's to get some balls. I'll be right back. I wonder if they got the same naming convention in Africa. Hey, yo, Lou, where you going? I'm going to Mandingo's. I'll be right back. Yo, what would it be like if you walked into Mandingo's? As soon as you walk in, you'd be like, wow, this place is twice as big as Dick's. That's my time, y'all. There you go. Lewis. Daraville. Lewis, stay up here. Where are you going? No, stay up here, Lewis. What is hey. this? Is this your first time seeing the show? Yeah. Wow, really? You're just a comedian from Philadelphia? Step up to the microphone. They're just like, hey, there's a show going on at uh, Helium. Go sign up. You get 60 seconds and then run away for yeah, your life. Yo, real, real talk, my friend from, uh, from Jersey, his name is Danny Braff. He's in the back. We're both comedians from uh, Prince, um, New Brunswick area. Sure. And he's like, yo, you want to come through? I said, fuck it. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. the kind of fan base that we have for this show. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Absolutely, uh, babe. Be better, better now than ever. Were you were New Brunswick, New Jersey? Yeah, but I was born and raised in Princeton. And uh, shout out to the one fourth of the black guy. His name is Justin. I saw him in the background. Wow. Wow. Shout outs. Yeah. You really are. You really are a black guy. He's yeah. Uh, shout out to the one quarter all state athlete in the house. Yeah. I love the guy from Princeton surprised at the lack of black people around. Uh... When that's, you say one accurate. fourth of a black guy, what do you mean by that? Like he's like mixed <laughs> no, or something no, like that? No. Sounds like heaven. No, they're like. like... <laughs> what? Oh. I... Red man. We literally counted how many black guys walked in. Like... Oh, now you know how white people do it. <laughs> <laughs> You really are for Princeton. Can somebody, can somebody get me your manager? I saw seven black people in this restaurant. What kind seven. of place is this? Uh, Lewis, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Three years. Three years. Yeah, less than that. What do you do for work? Uh, IT asset management at a German company. At a German German company. insurance company, sir. Whoa, German insurance company. What are you covering? Like trains and stuff? Or like what do they have going on out there? It, it's reinsurance. So technically we take over the debt of other bigger companies like Geico or something like wow, that. Wow, look at that. A black guy taking on someone else's debt for a change. That's incredible. I love this. Thanks, brother. You're a special guy. So three years, you do it all in Jersey? Uh, no, I'm in the tri-state area from New York, Philly, Jersey. New York, Philly, Jersey. Wow, that's cool. How long was your trip here today? An hour. Your friend that you came with, he's black too? Uh, no, he's a Caucasian Jew. Whoa. <laughs> so you were like, I definitely want to drive an hour to do thir or 60 seconds. I like, didn't even know I was going to come up. Uh, <laughs> it was like affirmative action. <laughs> I guess so. You call it affirmative action. We call it the luck of a bucket. Uh, <laughs> I call it affirmative black shin. Hey, there you go. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Danny DeVito's wife coming in hot. Uh, oh, Pearl. Rhea Pearlman. That's a Rhea Pearlman reference for those of you fans of <laughs> Cheers. Uh, hell dope. yeah. Lewis, tell us something uh, that we'd be surprised to know about you. Uh, fun facts about you. I was an English teacher in Japan. Wow, look at you. And then they kicked you out for breaking too many Asian women's vaginas? <laughs> All those poor ladies. Uh, uh, sounds accurate, yes. Really? In the shallow, la, 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 la. <laughs> how long, uh, how long were you in Japan for? I was there for like uh, a little over a year. Wow, what took you there? What, why Japan? Well, I used to watch Japanese uh, dramas. Like, um... Like the Japanese version of ER. 
Wow, you really are from Princeton, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, the, <laughs> the dra- uh, j- j- how do you even find that you're into something like that? I was flipping like through that. the channels. Flipping through the channels. Yeah, and then in the, Japan? Like, <laughs> it, it was like a Japanese um, time show, like yeah. an hour out of every Saturday. And as I was flipping through the channels, I was like, oh, snap. Oh, it, snap. It, <laughs> is it true that the Japanese version of ER is EL? Oh, uh, shit. I don't even get it. I, I asked mean? if it was true. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, do, so do you have an Asian fetish? Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, you watched a, dr- a soap I opera. I don't discriminate, you know? What's your favorite thing about Asian women? Oh, um, uh, Legs. Legs, they have them, yes. They yeah. have two of them. <laughs> Very short legs. <laughs> Very yes. different than uh, different than most women. What, what what is your preferred type of woman? Your um, favorite? Tall leggy. Tall leggy skin color? No no preference. Doesn't matter. So if I showed you Gumby in a wig, you'd be like, Fuck yeah. I think Look Cap- at those legs on that fucking <laughs> Cap- Gumby I think ass bitch. Yeah, I don't know why. her. What do, you think of, what do you think of this lady right here? Ah, a little Jolena for you. For those of you, uh, 99.999% of you that didn't see that, uh, held up a picture of yeah. Jolena. All yeah, right. Roy Robeson with a question over here. Talk to yeah. me, brother. Yeah, so do you speak Japanese? A little bit, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Can you give us a little example? Can you say, get your uh, white honky ass out of here in, uh, in Japanese? I know the word for a white person is hakujin. Hey, take it. all right. You just, you just, you just let it rip. Ten how points. Would, how would you say that? Can you just say any, really any? We, we we won't know what the fuck you say anyway. So you can literally just say like a Japanese sentence. Kill Tony wa totemo omoshiroi desu. That was African. That was pure. That was not Japanese at all. Did you just tell them you were teaching them English? You lied to them. Yeah, are you like doing ebonics with Japanese? Konnichi, what's up? <laughs> wow, Coach Robeson. Yeah, that's accurate. Do yeah. you still have a uh, CD player? No, I don't. <laughs> so, that's all I needed to know about wow. that. I Red- still have an A-Trek in my Chevy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Lewis, thanks for getting it started, man. You didn't even know what you came in for tonight. You got the whole party started, Lewis. Daraville, everyone. Hey, oh, hell yeah. You guys having fun? You get it? You, you know what's going on? You get, it's so funny. The only person that doesn't know what they're here for just got on stage first. Pretty amazing. Okay, let's see what happens now. Make some noise for Corey Arlet. Corey Arlet. Wow. It's a loud pop there. Here he is. This Corey. Oh, hey guys. Uh, I'm 29. I still have wet dreams. And by that I mean I piss my bed all the time. Because I'm an alcoholic. Ooh, yikes. I, I know, I know, I know. Um, sometimes I mean, when you're at your own house, it's one thing. Uh, people just think that you wash your bed all the time. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of germs down there, bud, you know what I mean? Very hygienic. But when you do it at a stranger's house, it's another thing, you know? You wake up, it's like a CSI scene. There's like a white chalk around the piss. You gotta, you gotta kind of weeble wobble. Well, you get rid of all the evidence, obviously, because uh, it's a crime scene, you know what I mean? You know, take the, take the other couch cushions out back, you know, shoot them. <laughs> Put them into put them into separate trash cans around town because that's how you get rid of stuff, you know. As a criminal, I gotta know, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, and I know what you're all thinking. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, hey, Sakori. Let's I was shitting my pants that whole time. Talk about it. it. I bet you are, according Woo. to all of your material. That's pretty no, much what you Technically, I do. was pissing my pants. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. How oh, dare you? Fuck yeah. So, Corey, you're basically a disgusting piece of shit human. Uh, you drink a lot. You thank you. Thank shit. you. People's thank beds. you. 
How no, true is that? How often do you uh, how often do you pee the bed? Uh, I mean, in the last two weeks, twice. Are you fucking Which, serious? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, not, that's not because of drinking. You have no, something no, really was, wrong with it you. It was man. only because I was blacked out. You know, <laughs> I wake I, up. I like, go outside Ugh. in the hallway of a hotel. I know, room. I know, I know. <laughs> but there's there's the you fun sure kind. It's not jet lag. <laughs> there's the fun kind. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. There's the fun kind where you walk around your house and pee on stuff, and then there's the other kind where you just pass out and pee on. Wow, you're like you're like, you're like Red Band if he just was about pee instead of poop. It's pretty incredible. Hey. <laughs> when, right. when Red Band's yeah, concerned, more than yellow, more than yellow. There you go. Yes, <laughs> that was the song. So Corey, uh, how, how, what what does it take? What do you usually drink in an average night? If you could give us a little ballpark of uh, what it really like around uh, a a bunch of uh, vodka mainly, to be honest. Yeah, uh, like a like a piss load. <laughs> no, no, it's it's just no, your no, one I, table I'm of just coked kidding. up day I'm drunk friends. That, uh, I, I, know, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I can tell that you're really feeding up. off of their ah. energy. But really, don't ignore the uh, the perhaps uh, 300 other people not making a sound, staring at you like yeah. you're a crazy Tony, man. Tony, give this to me, all right? So, Corey, give tell us more me. about you. You have a job? How do you how do you make all this sweet, sweet vodka money? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I, I mainly drink the cheapest vodka, New Amsterdam, uh, the newest of Amsterdam. Are you Amsterdam's? giving shout-outs now to <laughs> vodka companies? What I mean, do you do for yeah. work? What do you do for a job? Uh, if you want to piss the bed just like me, drink New Amsterdam. <laughs> I think the cheapest uh, vodka is rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much, to be honest. You must uh, hate your fucking job because you are stalling dude, like dude, a motherfucker. You, yeah, yeah. I'm I looking mean, at you pretending like dude, you know, just, dude. we're just going to talk about vodka I knew, the whole I, time. <sighs> It's, it's very hard to explain. Uh, we yeah, work in a manufacturing. You're, a fucking, <laughs> you're what? You sell CDs? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you. What, you, kind, you, what you, kind of CDs? <laughs> what kind of CDs? What is the implication there? I don't get it. Like, <laughs> Corey, shut up. What do you do for work? <laughs> uh, I work at a manufacturing company. Yeah, what do you manufacture? Uh, uh, machines that make microchips, for lack of a better word. So whose friend's dad got you that job? <laughs> really? Is he really over well, there? Well, these guys over here, shout out. Is, yeah. it, is it really true? You got it from a friend's dad? Sincerely, yes, you right there. <laughs> that man right there, That's you. How you get, it's the only way to get jobs. That man very good. It doesn't work. actually matter. You can stop pointing. I, did, I didn't care either. I just, Will uh, you stop sagging your pants and pull them up? You are disgusting everyone me right that. now. Jesus. Everyone always does it. Jeremiah! not how we do things in Kansas at Johnson County Community College. <laughs> Corey, how long have you been working that uh, that tedious yeah. job manufacturing microchips? Because I would, uh, honestly, if I had that job and I was just stuck doing that and wasn't like, you know, following up with any serious hobbies or fun things, I'd probably be pissing my bed twice a week, too, from alcoholism. Dude, two for two. Uh... I used to I used to actually do sales door to door. Oh, that's worse. in Philadelphia, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got Verizon Fire issue. you? What's up, yeah? <laughs> Dude, they no, hate no. you. Your own city hates no, no, you. No, no, How no, many no, of you hate Corey? <laughs> I mean, they really hate you. Oh wow, even your friends. They didn't. <laughs> wow. They're so fucked up that they cheered for that part yo, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my first time, yo. Give me a chance. No, right? I know, I know. I was so nervous time. about coming up here, Tony. Relax. Jesus. You're a cheese dick, aren't you? Like, so <laughs> cheesy. I'm so cheesy, right, Ben? So, uh, so Corey, tell us more about you. Uh, you know, obviously, your whole life can't just be going to the manufacturing company and, and drinking and sleeping in late and then doing it again. There's no way that that's possible. Give us something a else lot. about you. Tell us. A lot of a lot of bed wetting, but I mean, if you want to look for like a, a rare skill that I have, uh, yeah, sure. I'm really good at. <laughs> this is gonna sound so like I'm really good at balancing on a wheelchair for some reason. What do you What do you How do you balance like, on a wheelchair? You know, you when you're on a wheelchair, there? you can kind of balance. You mean on you it. pop a wheelie and you hold it there? That's it. No, no, there's way more. There's you way do more. like tricks? What do you yeah, do? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I like, can like, like wobble Latino around. Like Latino hydraulics and stuff? Like, <laughs> <laughs> wobble around. I get, Bounce I get, it up and I down. I can make the wheels spin a is little bit. Is that really true? I swear to God, yeah. Wow, do we have a that wheelchair is... here anywhere? I, I hoped you would ask, to be honest. I What's hoped that? you would ask. I hoped you would ask. 
That is the that is like the whitest Anybody shit ever. Wheelchair? Like, yeah. I'm gonna dude, find dude. a hobby based off something someone else really needs. I know, I know, it's terrible, <laughs> but I get it from my grandma, and I use it as my computer chair. So what did you story. get from your grandma? Not talent. <laughs> wow! Oh! God damn you, Joel Berg! God my damn mom's you. in a wheelchair. God damn you, Joel Berg! That's true. Joel's mom is in a wheelchair, so yeah. he has taken special offense to this. Yeah, I mean, my grandma was in a wheelchair too, so that's how I got. And it. you <laughs> took it from her. <laughs> no, no, she, she could died. have still she been died. in one. Is that true? When your grandma died, did you take her wheelchair? She died. She died. I, I guess I inherited it, if you wow. would. Wow. I guess I so. mean, I just took it, but no Corey, one else. Corey, you're one of the few people that become more unlikable the no, longer no, you stay no, on the no, stage. No, 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 no. Normally, we find I'm like sorry. A, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't we try this? Why don't you give us one redeeming quality? Something that'll make us all love you. Like something from the, something from the heart about you, Corey. Last time I asked you this, uh, you said that you do uh, wheelies in wheelchairs. Uh, well, you yeah, asked if I had any special skills, but no, it's not really. likable qualities. It's hard to attain. You know. Uh, oh, got, Jesus. Got, All right. We got, the, we got your fucking friends chiming in now. I knew this would happen, to be honest. Come on. Uh, they they, they kind of made me sign up for this. I didn't want to do this, to be I, honest. I, I could tell uh, you didn't want to do really this. I was really nervous. I was re- no, no. Nothing against you. To- no, no, okay. no, no. It's no, okay. I wanted to be on the show. It's okay. I, I, can't no, be- no. I can't believe it was two or three no, minutes no, ago no, that no. I said you become more was unlikable too, the longer you're up I was too here. nervous. I was too nervous to do now it. Now you're just rambling and bumbling I on know, a live podcast. Right, yeah. I love it. Jeremiah. I have spoken to the board at Kiltony University. Your scholarship has been revoked. Goodbye. There he goes. Corey Arlett. Okay, there he goes. There goes Corey. Dude, I didn't even fucking want to do this. One guy didn't know what the show was. The other guy didn't want to do this. Uh, We are on a hot streak here in Philadelphia. Only seven more shows here in Philly before we go back to L.A. on Sunday. So at this rate, let's see what happens with this guy. This guy sounds like he has a comedy name. Make some noise for Dylan Dowdle. Dylan Dowdle. Here he comes. No, he's he's not him. Oh, there he is. Here he is. Make some noise one more time for Dylan Dowdle. Philadelphia, what the fuck is up? How's it going? All right, so the last eight months have been really shitty and tough for me. Um, I lost my father over the summer, and my dad was a workhorse for our family. He sometimes worked 74 to 80 hours a week just at a job that he didn't like. But at the end of the day, he took a shot for something he really believed in before he left. That shot was unfortunately a 12-gauge shotgun that he bought for me on my 13th birthday. Um, So going through that has taught me a lot of things. It's taught me so much fucking shit. Um, One, I can call my girlfriend daddy way more than I thought I was going to. Easily. Um... Two, I'm more vulnerable. I'm okay with like crying and doing the weird <laughs> thing in front of people, you know? It's just made me open up a little bit more. And I also don't have to worry about talking about the conversation where sometimes my girlfriend pegs me and I don't, I don't have to bring that up around dad. And mom's been around a lot of tough shit, so you know she can take it. Fuck yeah. Dylan Dowdle. My bad. All right, let's talk about it, Dylan. First of all, welcome to the show. Do Thank you, know you what, Tony. Did you yeah. sign yourself up? Do you know what you were here for? Fuck yes, I love this show. I love um, it. Well, we love you. You're the yeah. first ever lesbian werewolf we've ever had on this show. <laughs> I'm really excited gotta, that you're here. Uh, I have a I have a question about your eyebrows. Yeah, what's up? Why? <laughs> They just grow, man. I try to trim the sides. It gets worse than this. You I look mean, like just Super Mario slot. became an app developer. <laughs> look out there, Dylan. Show the yeah, people those eyebrows. Yeah. Show them those fucking <laughs> thick yeah. lashes. Looks like the Kardashian Christmas photo. Uh, yes, Jeremiah. Uh, yes, Roy Robinson here. I would like to offer you a full-time position as the women's volleyball coach at Johnson <laughs> County Community College. I accept. I accept, Roy. 
So Dylan, that was fun. Have you done stand-up before? This is my sixth time doing it over sixth. the span of three years or so. Over three years. Yeah. Hell yeah. When did your dad kill himself? Um, he killed himself July 24th of 2018. 2018? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did you talk to him in uh, the days before or anything like that? Was there any sign yeah. that this was going to happen? Did you give him the gun? Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, yeah, no, I talked to him. It, he, something came out that he was ashamed of and uh, Ooh, something my mom didn't second. know Hold about. Hold on a second. Wait a uh, second. Here. Wow. My son. All right, all right. People don't shoot themselves three times right now. <laughs> he, he had a big head, just like his son. Wow. Damn. That's true. I'm surprised he didn't accidentally shoot you, too, in the... Uh... I, you know, sometimes I wish he would. No, I'm just... Oh, come on. I Dylan. know, I know, I know. But it's normal to feel that way sometimes. Fuck come it. Come on, Dylan. Don't I'm be being honest. Sad. Come well, All right. Well, that just makes it sadder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, where were we? We said that... What uh, was your, your dad, dad ashamed Your about? dad uh, had something come out that... It, what, what came out? Was it you? Um, no. No, actually, surprisingly not. And I did audition for the Annie solo when I was nine years old. So Is that's that very really surprising. True? Can you that's give us a little true. example of what uh, your vocals from the Annie solo? The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. I don't even remember it. You know what I mean? There you go. Um, Look, they like you. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, guys. You definitely are now a little orphan. <laughs> You can't make this shit up. Sometimes it's just, sometimes I'm just standing on a ladder next to the basketball hoop and the ball just lands yes. in my hand. <laughs> Little orphan Annie, his dad killed himself. Anyway, uh, so I'm dying to know. I mean, he's dead. This can't bother him. What came out that he was ashamed of? Um, he had uh, sexually assaulted someone back in the day, and then the news came out later on, and then. Fam- news came to my family and he was ashamed and went away and did that and we tried to console him out of it tried to get him uh, help and uh, yeah he just couldn't face the fact that uh, he basically raped someone back in the day right basically yes not yeah not rape but, rape but, not but, like dick in a vagina but like maybe like fingers and some shit like yeah that. we don't need to get into details but that's the, oh that's okay the, that's uh, the maybe, it, maybe it was a dick after all it seems like it was probably a dick in a vagina no I'm kidding <laughs> Uh, wow. Do you, do you have a part of your childhood you don't remember? <clears throat> <laughs> Red man. <sighs> was, it a, was it a 20 Me Too caliber gun? <laughs> anyway, that's a... 20 <laughs> Me Too? Uh, 20, 20... Okay, Joel Berg. Uh... <laughs> My goodness. Man, I wish I knew more about this debt. Was, was he? Uh, did he work around here? Was he a uh, part of the Penn State coaching staff or anything? Like <laughs> no, I actually drove here from um, Geneva, New York, and then picked my friends up in Rochester and drove all the way here. Here? Wow! Yeah. From Rochester. Fuck yeah! Wow! I got here right at seven. Well, I don't know yeah. if you know this, but I made a promise to myself to never perform in that high up in upstate New York ever again. It's uh, one of the places that I've sworn uh, away. So congratulations to you for being smart enough to make the drive because we're never coming there. <laughs> You'll always have to make a drive to come here. Uh, so you picked up friends in Rochester. So how long have you been driving for today? Five hours and 40 minutes, wow. give or take. Look at you. Yeah. Wearing that sweet Traveling. Uh, hey. <laughs> I love it. We've just accepted he's both a coach and a referee at the same time. Like, it's like, okay. <laughs> I coddle my athletes, okay? I'm sorry that I take them through all the rules of basketball to make sure that they don't make the same mistakes that I did in my life. <laughs> what, what mistakes did you I make? ended up as a head coach at Johnson County Community College in Kansas. How do you think my life is going? And yes, I still listen to CDs. <laughs> Wow. 
So, Dylan, uh, that's interesting that you've only done it six times. Um, what uh, what are some other things in your life that you think uh, you could talk about other than um, your dad dying and uh, what you look like? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a chef, and I also make music. I play guitar, I rap, I play drums. Oh, give us a little... I mean, jeez Louise. You know, I think it's one of those situations where uh, I want to hear what your rap sounds like. I am dying. Okay. To, uh, Fuck yeah. Yeah, can you give us a little, what do we, what do you want to freestyle? You want a beat? Yeah, give me a beat, something lo-fi, soulful, I don't know, whatever you, you got. Go. Joel, actually. Joel will give you a little beat. All right. I'm blowing up like an asterisk, getting my ass kicked while I'm sucking dudes off who rubbing off chapstick. Everybody wanna talk like a Top Gun, they maverick, but they don't hit with my hooch. I'm a pooch, I'm a straight dog, and I'm chilling in the booth. You wanna come get a me? Come out the coop. Chick is flicking, everybody finger licking, and you know the thunder has just fucking stricken. Whoa! Wow! I mean, that was a hell of a rap. I mean, jeez Louise. Hey, what do you think, Joel? Uh, do I have a question? Do yeah. you, uh, are you a better drummer or a better rapper? <laughs> Woo! Good question. I started out from 10 to 18 playing drums, and I've been playing guitar and writing songs more, but I, I, fuck, I, I have a great time on the drums. I don't know if I got the speed... But I have a good fucking time. You guys think we should have a Mexican drum off right now? All right. The people have spoken. Let's give it a shot. His father killed himself. He's a chef. He's multi-talented. The guy can freestyle rap. He can Little Orphan Annie. You know... He's got everything in between. Let's find out, uh, shall we, the drumming stylings. Now, let me remind you, Dylan. You know this show pretty well, don't you? Yeah. Let me remind you that if you happen to have a better drum solo, according to the audience, then Joelberg, then you will not be working in the kitchen this weekend because you will be the new drummer for the Kill Tony band. We will take you back to Los Angeles. <laughs> We're going to take you back to L.A. In all expenses paid trip, you're going to be staying in a hotel room with Jeremiah for the rest of uh, the weekend if you win. And uh, we're going to have to teach Joel how to work in a kitchen, which I don't think that's going to be that hard. Uh, and uh, here we go, giving it a shot for the throne. It's a Mexican drum up, and this is Dylan Dowdle. Dylan Dowdle. All right, step on back up here, because it is about that time that I reintroduce to you the reigning, defending, undefeated Mexican drum off champion, the one and only Joelbert Joel Jimenez. Yeah, look out. Get that way. <laughs> wow, he's got it. <laughs> He's got Star Wars underwear on and oh a tube God. sock hanging out of the side. Wow. Joel, are you ready to do this shit? Fuck this guy, dude. <laughs> Here he is defending the throne, Joelbert. Wow. Yep. I don't know. This has definitely been a Mexican drum off. Uh, how many of you have uh, Dylan winning that one? <laughs> how many of you have Joelberg winning that one? There we go.
Well, Dylan, uh, looks like you might be following in your father's footsteps here. Uh, Now, I'll tell you what, though, Dylan, uh, for only six times on stage, I love the stuff that you're talking about. Uh, You know, you just got to do it more, get out there more, work it out, trim it up, and uh, great stuff here today. Great time. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Come back again next time. Dylan Dowdle, ladies and gentlemen, he drove six hours to be here today. Come on. Tony. Yes. Can I just say, when these guys challenge me, I change their bum lives. They come out, they, they call their wives, they go, baby, we made it. We did it. Joelberg challenged us. Honey, get the red panties. It's red panty night. Has your hairline gone back since the start of tonight's show? <laughs> it's so rock and do. <laughs> it's definitely something. I love that now, now, now you have to wear underwear uh, for the drum-offs, thanks to our friends over at YouTube. So now if you want to see Joel's pubes, you have to look on top of his head tonight. So. <laughs> All right. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Charlie Dodge. Charlie Dodge. Or Dodge. Dodge. Wow. Here comes Charlie, everyone. He looks like a Charlie. Come on, Charlie. Get it, buddy. What's up, Billy? How are we all doing tonight? So I went down to a bachelor party in New Orleans a little while ago, and uh, who here's been to NOLA? Nobody. Oh, all right, a couple people. So, you know, it's like there's a couple things you got to do. Like, you got to get some beignets at Cafe Du Monde. You got to, yeah, they're delicious, right? And then you got to get a hurricane. And then uh, you also have to walk out of Larry Flynn's Hustler Club at about four in the morning while you're drunk as shit. Hop into a unidentified cab and get abducted and made to sell crack for the rest of the night. <laughs> it's a good time. So uh, when you're doing that, when you're coming out of your blackout, the minute you know you're fucked like really, really fucked, is when your, uh, your cab driver turns around to you and he's like, hey man, I'm gonna need you to do a favor for me. <laughs> That's when you're like, fuck. Go ahead, finish it. I wanna see if this goes anywhere at all. Uh, where this goes is uh, I get handled a little baggy and uh, the problem is, you know, in New Orleans there's you know shotgun houses. And he's like, go up into that house. And I'm like, Right door, left door. That's when he just like pulled me back in. It was like, no, no more for you, son. And then he kept me for the rest of the night, and I had to buy him a bunch of shit. All right. Uh, he uh, asked me to keep going. Yeah, but you never didn't go anywhere. I love it. Yeah, we didn't think he was Jesus. just going to keep going until we stopped oh. you. Uh, we wanted to hear maybe the end of the joke or something. Uh, welcome to the show. How you doing? Nice to meet you, Charlie. How long have you been stand up? This is literally first time ever. First time ever on stage. Very good. Let me tell you uh, what the people want from you. You want to know what the people want from you? Hit me up. First of all, they want you to take that goddamn hat off. I could tell right now. Look at this guy. It's, he's a real fucking redhead. Look at this fucking contrast. On I'm not side. Irish, though. Fuck, fuck St. Patty's Day. That is my least favorite There's day on the planet. There's nothing America loves more than a chubby guy with red hair. You look like uh, Louis C.K. before he learned how to jerk off. Oh, dude, I'm gay, though. Fuck that. He looks like if you feed Ed Sheeran after midnight. <laughs> True. Ooh. He looks baby, like, he baby. Looks, he looks like the problem child if his problem was that he ate too much. <laughs> we went from little orphan Annie to little orphan angioplasty. <laughs> These are fat redhead jokes, if you're wondering. And that was sort of my point, is that, uh, you know, you could talk about what you look like and how, like, you don't get laid and stuff. Oh, dude, Do I you? got grinder. You like, get a lot of pussy? That's not a problem. Do you, uh, what's no, pussy is pussy's not the. I've got grinder, bro. Like, are you no. gay? <laughs> yeah, that's. Are that, you really gay? That's not a problem. Are you like, really? That's Charlie. Easy. Stick with me here, because <laughs> the grinder joke wasn't working. So I'm just trying to figure out: Are you really gay? Like that's something some normal says up here. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So you are gay. Yeah. Okay. What's what type? You of are gay? the chillest gay dude I've <laughs> ever met. 
I love that you think that you're so it's gay your that fault, just coach. Know that you're gay. Whoa! Somebody went to Kansas City. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What the darn nation do you mean by that? You it's remember my fault. that time? <laughs> Refresh. You my know memory. that time. <laughs> Refresh. Tell him what he did Co- to you. Coach Sandusky, come on. My name is Coach Roy Robeson. I have worked at Johnson County Community College for eight consecutive years, okay? That is 32 quarters. I have never touched anybody. Yes, I have been tempted, but no, I have never done it. So, Charlie, you really are And you will not be getting a full ride scholarship. All right. All right, Coach. So Charlie, uh, tell us what what does your uh, what does your dream guy look like? Like what type of guys are you into? You like them bigger, smaller, black, white? Soccer players? Soccer Yoga, players? Yeah, Is that that's, just a fact? Right. Really? Yeah. Are you still yeah. trying to be? Fi- I can't tell when you're trying to be funny He's a when you're being guy. serious. No, no, no. That's that's that's, that's pretty on the field. <laughs> God, I can't believe you like to get handsy with soccer players. That's so uh, against their... Uh, anyway. uh, so, Charlie, has it always been the way? You ever been with a woman before? Oh, yeah. It was... I went to Bama, so, like, you, you have to. to Bama? You have to for a while until you kind of, like... How long were you in Alabama for? Five years. What age was that? 19 to 20 and you had to like yeah. pretend like you were into chicks for a little bit until, so what's that you know like? you got to earn respect what's it like being a gay guy in alabama trying to uh pretend like you like chicks can you give us an example of like a time you go to new up? orleans and get abducted by crack dealers no, a lot. That did, let's not go back to that let's pretend <laughs> let's it's pretend the truth. like that never happened let's pretend like you never talked about that on stage i'm fine i can all pull the, up police reports i know I, they're fun i'm not saying you time. lied i'm saying it was a pretty boring unput together <laughs> story really really didn't like it's like it's a better (laughs) better premise than it is a story all right all right right. so uh what was it like hooking up with women in alabama even though you're gay what's that i mean i just can't even imagine i mean you go upstairs to that and then you come back out and you're just like (laughs) wow but 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 then just like guilt takes over and then guilt takes over and then you're just like oh no oh no yeah so how coach, many women, coach, coach, this is terrifying. How many for me women still. have you actually been with? Oh God! Is meth called gay out here? By the way, like <laughs> is, that, is that just a local term? Charlie answered. Six. Them. Is that true? Six women. Is that a real number? Through, through high school and college, yeah. Through high school and college. That is more women than I have been with. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How about? Uh, I'm aware, coach. Charlie, stick with me. How about men? If you had to guess how many men you've been with. Let's not get there. I can there. smell your dick from here, so it's probably uh, a lot. No, two. I'm kidding. How about a ballpark of uh, men that you've been with? Um, my mom might when you been she's, she's not. This is, <laughs> she already knows not, you're gay, dude. <laughs> your mom's not going to read about this. Uh, there's no Kill Tony report. We can barely even get the podcast out at a decent time. Uh, no one's writing books about it. Um, yeah. What is your number and then uh, how many rebounds? <laughs> a triple-double, Coach. Charlie, stick with me over here. I do here. not like our chemistry. Yeah, it's really bizarre. You landed a one big line with it because of what you did to me, and then uh, and then you've been chasing that dragon ever since, Charlie. So uh, plus or minus five, if you had to give a ballpark. Plus. No, that's not. That's, it's not even. That's, I guess. I guess that is what I asked, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, so, like, in a ballpark, give or take five, if you had to guess how many men you've been with. All right, like, five Grand Slams. Five Grand Slams. What the fuck does that mean? That is 20. That is 20 men. Wow. Five Grand Slams. Oh, okay, because it's four runs. All right. I thought he was just fucking dudes named Denny or something like that. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Wow. Wow. What do you do for work, Charlie? Uh, I'm a graphic designer, photographer, marketing idiot, you know. Marketing idiot. Have convincing you convincing people that their SEO is bad and that I can improve it. 
All right. Yep. I laugh again. Y'all are. I know a bunch of people in here do this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what the that fuck is, is, is happening shit, right now? <laughs> These people. It's an interesting uh, bucket of destiny so far. <laughs> wow. Man, Charlie, you are an interesting guy. I feel like there's something. No, he's not. No, he is. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Are you stoned? Are you stoned right now? I can't really Carla. Get, I can't really get clear answers out of you, Charlie. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're not really connecting. Did you eat an edible before this? No. No? Did you have Shake Shack before this? <laughs> That's more likely. All right, we're going to keep moving along. There goes Charlie Dosh, everyone. Charlie Dosh. The Darsh Vader. Dylan Dowdle is on Instagram at character not color, all one word. All right, make some noise for your next comedian, Mike Gunkel. How about that? Mike Gunkel. There he is. He's standing up. Threw a peace sign up. Anything can happen. You never know when the craziest moment in Kill Tony's history is right around the corner. Could be right now. One more time for Mike Gunkel, everyone. Hello, Philadelphia. So, uh, how many of us out there are thinking of spicing things up in the bedroom? Don't do it. It's a trick. It's code for fuck you in the ass. Okay? I even tried titty sex, okay? And you know what happened? She rug burned my chest until it felt like my nipple was about to pull off. I am missionary for life, okay? Whew, so I was in the bathroom before I got here and I was like stirring up my pudding, right? And then next thing I realized, I had splashed some out. So I just, it wasn't pudding. On the good side, I realized uh, I'm into Scheisser. Yes, I'm not even sure what that is, but when I searched up eating poop, it came up on my internet. Okay, so uh, other than that, I'm sorry. Uh, are there any ladies that are into Scheisser? Hold on, hold nice on, hold night, on, hold on. Really. Are there any ladies that are into what? I didn't catch it. Sh- Scheisser? I think that's how it's said. It's a German word. I, I'm not. All right, there he goes. Mike Gunkel. He doesn't even know what his own punchlines are. <laughs> Scheisser? I don't know. What do you think, Tony? What should it be? Wow. Mike, you are uh, an imposing uh, force on stage. I've always wondered what it would be like if Adam Levine made all the wrong choices in his life. Thank you. Um, or if Jeremiah Watkins wasn't funny. <laughs> that is... We got to get a picture of you two together after this show. That really is... Uh, that is what Jeremiah looks like. You're like a Venom version of... Uh, <laughs> Jeremiah, just brunette. You guys both have that same fucking it's beak. Like, it's like if Jeremiah wasn't in Hufflepuff, he joined Slytherin. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So, Mike, what's going on, man? First time doing stand-up? Yes, first time. Wow, how about a hand for Mike? Giving it. Doing it. You really eat pudding in bed? What? You really eat pudding in bed, or you just thought that was funny? I, I, I was on. It, it was the bathroom. I, I was Whoa. using the bathroom and mixing pudding. You were. Wait. Why were you doing that? that I, that's what I do. Wait, so you were going to the bathroom? Yeah, I, I was using the toilet. Yeah. And mixing you were going pee? Yeah. Stirring pudding. Yeah, right, right up. The stirring pudding is a two-hand job. Well, no, you, you, you pee. Well, I don't have to hold it. You just hold let it. You don't. You just. just go, you just let man. it go. You just aim the dick right yeah, over the just toilet and just fucking stir my pudding. Yeah, stirring up my pudding. Nothing else to do here. Just stir pudding while p- piss is flowing out of my dick. <laughs> yep. You don't sit down and pee and stir your pudding. I, I've never considered that. Wow, not even an option to you. Meanwhile, standing there, letting your dick just do all the hard work yeah. is uh, the only real option. What kind of pudding? It was uh, sugar-free, uh, Aldi's brand. Are you watching her weight? Is that why you got the sugar-free? No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. Huh. Just happened to be what was there. Wow. 
Mike, lo- tell, yep. Uh, I was going to ask how long he's been an amateur rollerblader for. <laughs> Do you, own, do you own a pair of rollerblades? I, I've never used rollerblades before. How about before. a skateboard? you have a skateboard? Uh, no. I no? Don't. What's the hippest thing about you? What are you into? What's your wildest form of transportation? you ever parasail? Uh, no, no. I have had uh, maybe five or six cars, but nothing special. Whoa, five or six cars. Yeah. What's the fanciest? Do they have CD players in them? <laughs> I did have an 8-track player in one, actually. But uh, No, I, I've never had a, a nice vehicle. Oh. You ever taken a hot air balloon anywhere? Nope. Really? <laughs> Man. Mike, what do you do for work? Drive for Lyft. Oh, hell yeah. One of the only uh, drivers that uses a hot air balloon. Not many people know that. But, uh, how long have you been driving for Lyft for? Uh, about a month and a half. A month and a half. What did you do before that? I was a optomechanical technician. Optomechanical technician. What does that mean? You look at people's assholes or something like that? <laughs> I just I build like optical things that lasers shoot through and stuff like that. And oh, the nothing f- you'd use. It's stuff that goes into something else usually. Like what? What do you mean? Like for laser eye surgery, oh. I build like some of the parts that would go into the machine. So basically, like as a coach, I have to put talent into the people who I am teaching, and then they go off to do better things. So we do pretty similar jobs. <laughs> sure. Where'd it go wrong? You must have messed up pretty good to lose that job and have to drive. No, I, I, I like lifts better. I, I prefer to have my free time. If right. my friends call me up, I can go out. I can come out here. What do you like of, to do with your friends? Uh, I've recently I've been playing uh, disc golf. And oh. <laughs> Okay. A lot Did of people have, like that. Uh, disc golf has a bad reputation, but it's one of my it's favorite fun. sports. Yeah, it's a little fun, fun yeah. fact. Yeah, Columbus, Ohio was one of the first places to do it. The yeah. first ever disc golf course is not far from us in Pasadena, California. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who the fuck said that? It sounded like a goat. Oh, my God. Look how angry this fucking guy is. <laughs> Douchebag on the field. <laughs> I can't, I, can't, I can't believe I just got, got, got gay by a five-foot-one Tate Fletcher sitting in the middle of this fucking crowd. Look how short you are. Oh, I guess you're a little bit taller than five. No, 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 no. We're not the same height. He was Sit rubbing my down. back. He was rubbing my back when I was sitting there and said, sorry, I didn't mean to rub your back. Oh, that you guy, what? yeah. Really? I, I was very uncomfortable. Yeah, that dude. Is that really true? Yes. Oh, who would have guessed happened. that the guy that called me gay is a yeah. socially awkward asshole? Of course. Mike. So let's talk about it. Uh, what else about you, Mike? Anything crazy ever happened in the back of your lift? No, but recently, I guess a couple months ago, I had uh, homeless people stay at my house. That yeah, was, how'd that happen? Wow. Oh, uh, well, I ran into them like they're kind of just walking down the street, and one of them had burned their feet off or something <laughs> undescribable, but they were kicked out of a homeless shelter, so I, I figured I'd let them stay at my house a couple days. That's they, such a bad re, idea. Re, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It re, was terrible. Re, they rewind, fought each other. Quick. Oh, it was awesome, but it was terrible. So they but, told you about their feet. Did you ever check the feet? Yeah, the feet were bad. It was really bad. bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. What the terrible. fuck? <laughs> Truly, Mike, what was going through your head when you decided that today was going to be the day you were a good Samaritan to these people? I, I've, had, uh, I've been homeless for a short amount of time in the past, and if it wasn't for people picking me up, I would not be in a good place. So, Wow. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> the guy's like, gay! <laughs> gay! I, uh, I too, uh, spent some time, uh, months, uh, one summer, uh, sleeping in my car, uh, working shifts at the comedy store, and I didn't have a place to go, and some people helped me too, and I would, uh, I would never in a million years allow homeless people with burnt off feet to stay at my place. In a million years. If I lived for a million years, and they're like, you get to live for a million years no matter what, I'd be like, all right, just no homeless people with burnt off feet. And we're good. I'll do it. <laughs> but look at you. You did it. So what was left? How did, was there any evidence left in your place after these? Uh, uh, no. It, I was trying to drive one of them to the hospital because of the feet. And the other one, I don't know. Guess and they're like, no, I yeah. won't let you drive me. You're going to charge me. You're a Lyft yeah. driver. 
That was basically it. They, and then they just started fist fighting, and then it was like... In your place? No, in front of my house. Perfect. And, yeah, and then the cops just came and Bum took them away. Bum fights! That was it. Yeah. All right. Well, Are they like vampires where you have to welcome them in, and then they're not homeless whenever they come inside your door? Yeah. Just can't keep them for more than 30 days. Okay. That's the same. You are by far one of the funniest vampires we've ever had on this show, Mike. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you up here. We're going to keep moving along. It's the very first time. Thank you. Mike Gunkel, everyone. Mike Gunkel. We're doing it. We're getting through it. How many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you sort of like it where it's at? You like people doing bad on this show? A little, uh, a little bit closer than usual. <laughs> All right. Make some noise for your next uh, comedian, John Papa Wave or Ave Pepe John Papa. If it starts with P E P A, it's you. Come on, let's do it. I feel like this is the one right here. I like this guy's energy already. Feels good in here. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> One more time for John, everybody. Hi. <laughs> so when I was 19 years old, my mother asked me if I was gay. That's a true story. Um, I was a little disappointed. I said, no, Mom, I just don't get laid. Ever. <laughs> and it's true. I actually didn't lose my... Vir- I'm 36. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 20 three years old. Yeah, wow, right? Yeah, I did get it, and I got it in a lot after that. Don't worry. Uh, I I do have a fiancé now, so I'm much more um, uh, calm than I used to be. Um, So my, (laughs) when I lost my virginity, it was actually in the top bunk of a dorm room at Stockton College. I don't know if anybody's from South Jersey. (laughs) Yeah, it was awful. (laughs) It was so bad. I I literally um, had sex in the top bunk of a dorm room bed and I had never had sex in my life before and maybe three minutes not even like a minute into it I didn't come I <laughs> I'm done go Get ahead mine. no finish you're finishing this. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, she, literally she started she was riding me and then she stopped and started crying um, and started talking about how we are both going to go to hell and then she gave me the worst blowjob I've ever had in my life. Wow. That's a true story. That's a true story. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I like you, man. What's your last name, John? DePasquale. I have terrible handwriting. John DePasquale? DePasquale. DePasquale, De if you want to be really Italian De- about it. but no, just, it's okay. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so, John, uh, yes. first time doing stand-up? Of course, yep. Fucking uh, awesome. How about that? Another first-timer. Uh John, I think you have a uh, long career ahead of you since you look like someone put uh, Rogan, Burt, and Tom Segura in a blender. Together. I'll take it. I, I really like this guy, so I got to get this out of the way. You are one of the funniest big toes we've ever had on the show. <laughs> it Thank is you. incredible. Uh, I do believe you're the third uh, member of the band as far as guys that look like high school coaches. <laughs> You high do five, any coach, coaching, high five. Don? What do you do for work? I am a wedding photographer. If anybody's getting married, a wedding photographer. I'm gonna ask you the same thing your mom asked you when you were 19. Uh, <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. How long sure. have you been engaged for? Um, since October. Since October, you popped the question. I did. did you do yes. it some way fancy or weird? No, it was, it was like actually it? super nonchalant. Yeah, like how? How did you like do it? we went out for our one year um, anniversary, mm-hmm. and then after we got back to our house. Um, I literally went upstairs and grabbed the ring and came back down and popped the question like at our kitchen table. Like it was, damn. Okay, so, so romantic. I'm your I'm your fiance. Okay, okay. you're coming down the stairs. Okay, yeah. and, and go. Show me how. Show us how you did it. So she actually asked me what I was doing upstairs, and, and I said, "What I was are you sti- doing upstairs?" Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I said, "I was Is thinking that what about." Her voice sounds I was like? thinking about no, no. Yeah, imagine I was thinking a about Adam's you. Apple. Actually, what are you doing? What were you doing upstairs? I was thinking about you. Oh. Wait, what? I was thinking about you. And then she said, you weren't thinking about me. You and weren't thinking about exactly. me. Exactly. And then I said, yes, I was. Will you please marry me? 
Bitch. Something like that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Did she cry or anything? Yes, we both cried. I'm a very oh, emotional person. Oh, you cried too? Yeah, for sure. Go, it again. There you go. <laughs> wow. I cry a lot, actually. It's kind of embarrassing. My goodness. I'm a oh. wedding photographer. I'm very emotional. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my pretty goodness. much it. So you're a wedding photographer. Yep. Who's going to uh, who's going to uh, who's going to take the pictures at your wedding? You're gonna take a you're gonna take a line from the guy's dad from earlier and shoot yourself? No. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey. No, I am one of one of my good, very talented friends, Eric Tallarico, is going to be shooting my oh, wedding. Oh, another yeah. shout out, shout wedding out photographer. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. He's really talented. No, oh, he's my friend. The craziest friend. thing you've ever seen at a wedding while taking uh, pictures? Uh, bar fights, drunk people fighting. Who usually fights at those things? Um, brother-in-laws. And yeah, shit? just family members. You know, a lot of family drama they at weddings. They drink, and then the drama people drink, comes and out. yeah, people start talking smack, and then people fight. I've literally seen like a brawl at a wedding. That was like the most embarrassing. <laughs> and that thing. happens here in Philly a lot. It was in South Jersey, uh, Wood, Woodcrest, Woodcrest Country Club. Yeah, what's up? Whoa, Jesus. All right, John, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for calling you gay so many times. Uh, I got a question. Yeah, sure. Um, how has your life changed since discovering the Cash Me Outside girl? <laughs> is that what, I don't what, understand is that what her joke. manager looks like? Uh, he looks like Dr. Phil. Oh, you think that's what Dr. Phil But spelled F-I-L-L. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Full. All right. Uh... <laughs> John, what do you do for fun when you're not taking wedding pictures? I do jujitsu. Really? Wow. I know I don't look like it, but I do. Good God. <laughs> Balls in my face. Yep, all the. My goodness. <laughs> what uh, what level belt are I'm you? A other, belt. other than extra large. <laughs> yeah, forty waist uh, purple belt. Purple belt. Look at you. I've been training for like seven years. God damn. Have wow. you ever rolled with a guy that got hard before? Never. I mean, it no. happens. Just Never. Like, yeah. Calm yourself. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? No, it doesn't. Ask Eddie Bravo. No. <laughs> no, I'm not going to ask Eddie Bravo. Where, where do you train? You want to give a shout out to your gym? I actually just moved to Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. Shout out to Precision Jiu Jitsu. Wow. Uh, Look at that. But I did train at South Jersey Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Berlin. So if anybody wants to train, go there. It's awesome. Jeez Louise. What do you eat? Everything. <laughs> Cheesesteaks. <laughs> Pizza. Really? Is that true? Yeah, I eat like shit, basically. You yeah, pretty much like... just eat whatever you want. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Could yeah. you, could you, uh, you know, as a fellow coach, you know, I teach a lot of players things. <laughs> could you teach me a jujitsu move? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah like show right now. Something. Why yeah, don't you right teach now. Coach oh, sure. uh, Robeson a little bit of something there? Heck yeah, you got it. Let's see what happens here. Uh, here, can, can we say like what? What if he tried to attack you in slow motion? Can you okay. show us what you would do? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Wow! Damn! That was awesome. Yeah. John's got that low, low center of gravity. That was a fucking hip toss. Coach Robison's hair didn't even move an inch. I would like to offer you a full-time position at Johnson <laughs> County Community College. I don't want to move to Kansas. I'm sorry. Wow. All right. That Can I not. just say, uh, for a moment, uh, I was not in control of the situation <laughs> at all. And I am a little, as the people say, shook right now. I love it, man. John. Do you, do you have any other moves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a long time, so I, I know a couple things. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. If you started by choking him, he'd probably. Uh, my guess is that he would survive it and flip it around on you somehow. But I don't want to. We should probably. Just... You want to choke me, Jeremiah? No. Oh my God. It's so adorable. <laughs> it's so adorable. How, uh... Can I just say, I have never been attracted to another man before. 
Man, Coach Robinson clearly has never in his life thought about choking another man. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that uh, rear naked that he had on you, but uh, the double elbows, I liked it, man. Very unorthodox. Okay, I guess nobody really had the angle on it that I had. Uh, all right. Well, John, uh, I, I mean, I'll tell you this. First time ever on stage. By far my favorite interview portion of the night and uh, probably one of the best sets of the night, too. Oh, thank so. you. Congratulations. I We're agree. We're going to keep it moving along. There he goes. John DePasquale, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. There he goes. Fuck yeah. Come on, guys. He's newly engaged. He's from Philly. It's all happening out here. I thought for sure he was going to take down this table. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I felt like the, uh, I felt like the uh, Mexican announce table at a WWE event. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, this is just going <laughs> to completely be flattened by the end of this. All right, let's see what happens with this guy, Mark Sosnowski. Mark Sosnowski. Oh, wow, here he is. Oh, wow. We can... Wow. Oh, he throws the hat for some reason. Oh, taking that microphone. Wow. Here it's... Wow. No, stop. He doesn't he didn't know that it was Jeremiah's mic. It doesn't matter. Here one more time, good and loud, with a positive energy for Mark Sosnowski, everyone. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Dreams do come true. I can't tell you what it's like to be getting the name pulled up here. I'm from Pennsylvania, everybody. It's such a pleasure to have Kill Tony here in Philadelphia tonight. My guy, as you can tell, I have a man bun, which automatically assumes I'm a musician and I work at a microbrewery and make no money whatsoever. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, one of the moments I've noticed uh, about growing up and being a millennial in my age, I'm only 32, but I noticed that, yeah, right, 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 right. But still, still, when I was a kid, I used to pirate pay-per-view all the time for my parents. I used to be really good with the computers and everything. And I just don't get what it is with uh, people these days. I can't keep up with uh, the younger generation. Everything about it is just confusing to me. I mean, I look at nowadays, I can't buy socks that don't cover my ankles. And, like, I can't think, how am I going to jack off into that for more than one night? Fuck yeah, Mark Sosnowski. All right. We've always wondered, uh, always wondered what it would be like if Gollum and Eric Clapton made a baby, and uh, we finally have an answer to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one of Eric Clapton's most famous songs, uh, Two Princes. Well, what's the difference between Eric Clapton and a bag of cocaine? Uh, I don't want you to finish this joke. No, I don't know. What is it? Clapton didn't let a bag of cocaine fall off a four flight of stairs. There you go. And I think you told it right. What's the difference between his son and a bag of cocaine? Would be the... That's what... There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No. Mark, you are you really 32? How are you 32? What have you been doing? Going around telling street jokes like that Eric Clapton one for the last... Yeah, just hitting potholes, everything like that oh as, as things go. What happened, man? What's going on with you? Is everyone in your family look much older than they are? <laughs> Rough roads. It's yeah. not the mileage, it's the highway. It's if the you think highway. I look bad, you should see my grandpa. <laughs> What's going on, Mark? What do you do for work? Uh, I'm a musician and I work... What do you do at musically? I'm um, a bass player and a trumpet player. Bass player and a trumpet. Can you can you mimic with your mouth what you would sound like playing the trumpet? Bound chicken wow wow. All right, exactly. <laughs> there it is. This is a special, uh, very special uh, confusion. Uh, like a special Olympic episode of Kill Tony <laughs> that we're having here this evening. Some ma <laughs> make a wish. So, Mark, you're able to support yourself just off of your musical abilities. Are you in a band? At, w at one time I was, yeah. Yeah, what was the name yeah. of that band? I was in a band called... I was in two bands from Philly. I was in a band called Mara and a band called uh, American Babies, and we used to play out of Philly and, like, do some touring and everything. Is that an American Babies fan I just heard back there? There was one guy that just moaned. Moaned like he was getting a chemo drip back there. Ah... <laughs> uh, 
that a real American Babies fan? Can you give us a, like a line from a famous American Babies song? Maybe these people would Oh, God, we song. weren't famous whatsoever, but... Yeah, that's sort of the point. W- yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, we used to tour and we opened up for a few bands in Philly and did some things. Yeah, uh, who'd you open up for? Someone that these guys might recognize? Uh, Lotus, Disco Biscuits. Uh, I actually got to open for Bob <laughs> Weir one time from the Grateful Dead. Oh, that's so cool. What'd you had do? some fun. What'd you, what'd you do for actually, when I was in uh, the last time I was in LA, I got to go to the comedy store and uh, did some kayaking around Malibu, and then got to go to the comedy shop and Jesus, saw. Okay, I've wait. never even been kayaking, kayaking in around Malibu. Malibu. Where at? I in the ocean? ocean? Just like, dude, uh, literally. We went kayaking, and I was like, I need to find a yacht with a helicopter on it until we call this a day. And we just smoked a few joints and like went like so kayaking time, around. Where the fuck did you kayak at in yeah. Malibu? I like, want to go in kayak. the ocean, dude. Uh, no, it was around like little <laughs> no, the like, sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Those little like houses that are like bodegas where you like get in like a little yacht and like just oh, go, like, like go around. Canal. Yeah, like inlets kind yeah. of thing. I lo- yeah, I love Joel's Nothing the only fans. one of us that thought that it was normal to kayak in the ocean. That might be no. the most Mexican. Yeah, no, that was mind blowing to me. <laughs> no. If I have to put thirty cents or fifty cents in the meter and get more than like an hour and a half, I'm like ritzy. So like being out in that like kind of neck of the woods and seeing you guys do everything, saw uh, God, a few comedians out there it was really inspiring, especially. Uh, Mark, are you a doomsday prepper? <laughs> I'm working on my hollow point collection, but I mean, it's... Do you think it's, the earth is flat? It, it's... What's the biggest conspiracy that you think is true? You don't really think the earth is flat, right? No, God, right. no. Okay, so what's, no. what's one that you believe in? Conspiracy theory-wise? Sure. Oh, gosh. Uh, that the fact that you need to go to college these days in order to have a future that'd that's be a good conspiracy you, you, go do what you want to do uh, yeah. don't don't let you, you could do be re- need you to could go be to college <laughs> it is very important the time you spend in college will shape the rest of your life so conspiracies really aren't your thing Mark but tell us what is something like weird and sort of neurotic about you because you have the look like your apartment would be like shaking oh I know I shouldn't be allowed around high schools or anything like that yeah, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's okay Ma- that's okay oh man based off of your look so you responded to one thing just so that people don't think you're an actual pedophile <laughs> right so you, that, it'd, be uh, good, it'd be a good move right um I have no idea what's going on I'm actually going to face the audience for this, this portion of like the show. This guy's like Mark Moron. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you could really rock a skullet. All right. Uh, just rock a skullet if you can. Bald in the front, pony in the back. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, Thanks, Mark. guys. Is somebody is somebody injecting the contestants with poison on this show? It, on it's called this alcohol. Day? They're all oh. drinking it. Oh, okay. Would you know my name <laughs> if I bombed on Kill Tony? <laughs> Mark, I thought you did wonderful tonight. That's another Eric Clapton joke. There he goes. Mark Sosnowski, everyone. I guess so. We're right. Okay, make some noise for your next comedian. We're going to fly through this one. Chad Asorastic. Asorastic. <laughs> Fucking horrible handwriting on all of you, by the way, tonight. Really, really pissed for. Chad Astoristic. Asorastic. You have those lights, guys? Lights? Blacklisted. Yeah, sure, he's blacklisted. Where the fuck's the house lights, guys? How, how are we bombing this? Is that Chad? Chad, is that you? No. It's like Lex Luthor on a mission. <laughs> Don't know where uh, the sound guy went. We had uh, an agreement. Put your hands together for Brian Durkin, everyone. There he is, Brian Ooh, Durkin. Here Durkin. he comes. All right, I like the name of the Durkin. He looks like your manager. <laughs> wow. Doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Come on, one more time good and loud Holy for Brian Durkin. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry, I got to catch my breath. Um, 
I once had a boss say to me, hey, Brian, you look like you could be a trans person. (laughs) To which I responded, "Uh, next time, Willow, can you mute the conference call? Thanks. (laughs) Uh, I had a Christian friend of mine describe the death of his grandfather as he graduated to heaven. Uh, well, my grandfather beat cancer twice, so I guess he got held back. <laughs> it's all right, though. He did eventually graduate, so. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It's just a certificate program, so <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I just read that North Korea actually has a new liquor that's hangover free. Yeah, if you drink this, uh, you won't wake up with a hangover. Uh, you do wake up in North Korea, so that's not good. Brian Durkin. Hell yeah. Brian, welcome. Thank you. You've done stand-up a little while, right? I have, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, how long? Like a few years. Oh, awesome. All here in Philly? Uh, yes, yes. That's great. You get to do spots here at Helium a lot? Uh, not that much, but yeah. like a... Once a month, maybe. Heck yeah, I like the way your bracelet jiggles. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real awful for podcasting. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, tell us more about, uh, about you and your life. Um, I do things. Now, I uh, used to work as a digital marketer, but I'm quitting my job tomorrow, actually. Uh-huh. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Quitting another job, man. That's incredible. I remember when you went from T-Mobile to Sprint. Like, <laughs> yeah. There was nothing. <laughs> I remember True. those dark days at Subway, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah, yeah. forget yeah. about those. I remember sure. when he was on that TV show, Queer Eye for the Tech Guy. True. I get Foe Rosa a lot. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That yeah, my Dude, next you, joke. You, there fuck. is something, uh, you're like Joe DeRosa if he had my arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you do for, well, I guess we have that answer. You in love? You have a boyfriend or girlfriend? Girlfriend. Uh, How long have you been with her? Three years, Where'd four you years. Meet her at? Met her at like a networking night thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. What kind of networking thing? Tell me more. I want to know what fucking dorks yeah. do at <laughs> night. Uh, I want to know what people that need help making fucking friends do it. Night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was looking for a job at the time, and uh, she was looking for new gigs too. She's a graphic designer. And, uh, yeah, it was funny because I Fuck went yeah. looking for a job and I was trying to read how to, like, be good at a networking night. And it was like, the number one thing you should do is not pick up people. And that's all that I left with right. was a number. Yeah. Hell yeah. But well, it worked out. We've, you know, I'm actually quitting my job because on the first, I'm moving to L.A. because she lives in L.A. now. Whoa. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. This yeah. might not be your only time on Kill Tony. I know. It's oh, exciting. It's kind of a preview. So she works in the tech world out there? Uh, she is a graphic designer. She works uh, for a natural gas company. So real sexy. Damn. Yeah. She works for Brian's butt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> natural. Okay, there's that fart noise. On to the next one. Next board. <laughs> okay, Brian. There we go. Only you think that shit's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, man, that was my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Brian uh, Durkin, mm-hmm. um, how long has your girlfriend been in Los Angeles? How long have you been here all alone? I know she definitely wasn't here today because you dressed yourself like that. Correct. Yes. It's frightening. A, yeah. A V-neck T-shirt underneath a V-neck cardigan. Yeah. Two V's. V's on V's. As in fucking vaginal valve. <laughs> yeah. like, he just... looks like every Pokemon stage of Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yes. I don't know Pokemon. I don't know Pokemon references because I'm a fucking winner, so I don't really get that one. But yes. Uh, so, uh, Durkin, tell us more about you. What, do you. what are your big plans when you come to L.A.? Anything exciting that you're looking forward to? Uh, yeah, do more stand-up uh, to keep growing my podcast. Um, do you have a job in L.A.? No, I have like one freelance gig for a few hours a week, but we'll be looking for another job for sure. What's your podcast about? Uh, it's like a dinner party meets board game night, so we chat. Oh, sounds like it sounds, reminds me of a networking night. I once. <laughs> you afraid that your girlfriend may have cheated on you while she's been out in Los Angeles? 
No, I don't think so. She's like a good Christian girl. So really, yeah, yeah. Wow, what's the craziest thing you guys have done together in the bedroom? Um, <laughs> kiss is good. Uh, no, a few years ago we did some pegging. Some what? Pegging. Pegging? Yeah, pegging. What is that exactly? That's where, that's where the girl gives the guy like a strap attack. Wait, what? <laughs> What is that? What's a strap attack? This is crazy. I'm <laughs> going further down a rabbit hole. Which yeah. I feel like is the next thing you're gonna say that you did. The woman fucks the guy in the ass with a dildo. Really? Yeah. yeah. You got you fucking your ass. Gay as hell, by the yeah. way. No, 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 no. Wait, Tony. <laughs> you're Tony. gayer than any West Hollywood. In in his defense, it's still Christian. Jesus did get nailed. Yeah. Hey, that's true. Uh, True. Nothing better than a good old Christian pay game. Yeah. Is it true that you came again three days after that for <laughs> some reason? Very true. Uh, but now we uh, we tabled that. We're now saving I it. Love for the, I love. By the way, like what a what a quick. That's Christianity for you, right? Like what a big misdirect. Like no, my wife would never cheat on me. She's actually quite Christian. What's the craziest thing? You know, she fucked me in the ass with a dildo. <laughs> Full-blown strap-on. Yeah. Me on all fours. Her just being the man. It's like, Jesus Christ. So you like yeah. that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Have but you ever had gay sex before? No, or no. Trans- How big was this uh, dildo that was in your butt? Uh, not that big. Not that big, no. Really? So they, they make, like, little dildos? They make, like, average-sized penis dildos? Yeah, yeah there's, really? like, yeah. there's, like, yeah. levels to it, I guess. Tony yeah. would like to know, how deep is your butt? <laughs> How deep is your butt? How is deep your butt? is... Uh, wow. What did you just say? Nothing. You know, I, I've been to a, massage, a lot of massage parlors. They try to always yeah, do the finger. Yeah, we know. We've you. We've heard you before. Every, every, every episode <laughs> of everything you've ever done before in your I, life. We know you've been to a massage I mean, parlor. I, I, have you guys... Yeah, I know you, you. I don't know if you've done this, but like, no. you've been in the shower at least once, and you're like, all right, I'm going to see if I like this, you know, and you put get it soapy, and you're just like, that. it's not for me, you know? Soap right. is not supposed to go up there, <laughs> yeah. first of all. Yeah. That's, that's Brian talking about cleaning his butthole for the first yeah. time ever. Yeah. Oh, this is not for me. Oh, that's not for me. I like a little crunchy. <laughs> me and soap do not get along. All right. Uh, well, uh, Brian Durkin, so much fun. So cool. nice to meet you. Great nice. stuff, man. Come Thank you. On, uh, come sign up for Kill Tony. Yeah, I'll be when there. When do you move? Uh, I move on the 1st. I'll be there the 4th. I'm taking the train. All right. Well, we'll yeah. see you then. We'll see awesome. you the first week of April in Los Angeles. Philly Zone, Brian Durkin, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you have uh, how many of you have tickets to the second show tonight, huh? Uh, yeah, I think we definitely have to. We have to, you, what do you guys think? Back to the bucket one last time, huh? We just have to. It's just how it's, 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 it's up to the bucket of destiny. One last one though. We are uh, going over our heart yeah. out. We're going to make it fast. So 60 seconds goes to your final comedian of the night, Nick Beckish, everyone. Nick Beckish. Wow, here he comes. Look at this. This looks like one of your students at Kansas City. Here he is, Nick Beckish, everyone. What the fuck? Your final comedian of the night, one more time for Nick Beckish. What's up? Uh, I am Donald Trump's other autistic son. (laughs) Guys, it's not funny to laugh at Eric like that. Um, it's World Down Syndrome Day. World Down Syndrome Day, you guys. Did you know that? Did you know that? In honor of that, I got a uh, Ancestry.com test. Turns out I have it, you guys. I'm one of them. So I'm single. <clears throat> looking for a lady, but uh, now that I know I have Downs, I'm kind of looking for a, a Downsy lady. Because. <laughs> You know, what happens, what happens if we have a baby, you guys? Like, the double 21st. What does that mean? That's a new type of human. There's no punchline there. That's all I got, Tony. 
One of the most frightening sets I've ever seen in the history of the show. Uh, pretty creepy how you look at me for all your punchlines. I don't think there was a punchline. But Nick, you are a special guy. This is the first time we've ever had a full-size midget on this show. Uh, very rarely do you see someone that is regular, normal height, but with all midget features, and uh, somehow you've done it. You are, uh, you were tearing it up up there on stage tonight. This guy, li this guy looks like Rudy if he never got put in. <laughs> yeah, that's a football coach reference. Yeah. And Nick, this was your first time doing stand-up tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something that you've always wanted to do? Uh, since I started watching your show, I guess so, yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. That's a fucking magical age. And, uh, and it's a good age, you know. Uh, there was a guy up here earlier that was, uh, that was 32 and looked like he was 75. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you already sort of have a, like a man, you sort of have like a man face for 22. Like you're pretty grown up, which is a good thing in stand-up comedy because people don't take kids that seriously. Uh, so that's good. And you're starting at just a perfect time. And we're out of time for this show. <laughs> And I tried to squeeze one more person up here, and it was you. But I want to tell you, 22 is the age that I just so happen to know for a fact many of my favorite comedians started at the age of 22. Me. <laughs> and I'm positive that there were other comedians that started at 22. So, you know, don't look at tonight as a bad thing. Anything else for Nick, Coach Durkin? Or I mean Coach Robson? Uh, he looks like Robert Pattinson from Twilight if he sucked protein drinks instead of blood. <laughs> That's true. You're, you have a fat head. There he goes. There goes Nick, everybody. Philadelphia, this was only the first Kill Tony. There's two. We have to do another one. Right after this, at 10.15. How many of you are, have tickets for the second Kill Tony tonight? Very exciting. Well, to the rest of you, hopefully maybe we'll see you on Saturday or we'll see you when we make our return to Philly, which I'm sure is just a short, short um, time away. Uh, thank you for being part of the history, the first ever episode of Kill Tony in Philadelphia. Pretty wacky, uh, pretty wacky lineup out of the bucket tonight, but we had fun. Uh, make sure you get your Kill Tony posters signed by us after the show. How about another hand for Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? Coach Roy Robinson. He's Jeremiah Watkins. He has a hit podcast called Jeremiah Wonders. He has CDs for sale after the show. And Feminist uh, Stacy. Uh, Feminist Stacy t-shirts are in the works right now. That's right. And uh, shout out to uh, David Knowles and Seth Miller for hooking up with the saxophone. I'm yep. excited to meet you guys. We got, them, we got them a clean shout out earlier. How about one more time for Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, everyone. He's mostly sorry. He's got new Joelberg stickers. We're all going to sign your Ryan J. Ebelt official Philadelphia poster if you get one. We'll see you right outside of here. Thank you guys so much. Brian Redband, everyone. See you guys. Good night. Thank you.